Okay. Now, we've been learning about various different types of fossil fuels of recent. Now, in Australia, there aren't really a lot of different types of fossil fuels found under the ground, with the exception down in Bass Strait of the oil. What Australia does have a lot of, however, is coal. Now, we learned about different types of coal. Now, as over the millions of years, various plant and animal material has decomposed and compressed into the ground, all the carbon matter is compressed together to form various layers of different types of coal. Now, for example, if we dig down into the ground a bit, as we dig right down deep into the earth, this is sort of like an open cut mine here because we're just taking the, um, the uh, uh, what's, what's the what's the name of the stuff that's on top of the open cut mine? The overburden. If we take the overburden off, here we see we have small amounts of peat. Now, peat is like compressed organic matter so all the carbony stuff of all the dead animals and dinosaurs and whatnot over the millions of years have compressed. But the problem with peat is, see, it's a bit too moist to burn it properly. Now in some countries like Ireland, where they don't have a lot of coal, they have to dry out the peat and sort of turn it into coal so they can burn that to use as energy. But as we, um, as the millions of years have gone on and the, all the mud and silt has compressed further down, if we dig a bit further down into this open cut mine, Oh, we find what we call brown coal, also known as lignite. Now, brown coal also has a lot of compressed carbon, which can be used as energy when it's burnt. But the problem is, as we can see, it's also a little bit too moist as well. It's okay, you can still burn it as energy, but it's not the greatest source of energy. So, what we really like to find, if we dig down even further, other organic matter that has been further compressed over the millions of years, even further down, which contains a lot less moisture. <laughs> ah, there we go. There you'll see, this is what we call anthracite, or black coal. This is the best kind of coal because it doesn't contain much moisture, and as a result it burns really good and produces a lot of energy in order to make electricity. So most of the electricity in, the, in this country is produced by burning coal. The problem is, it's a non-renewable source of energy, so after a while, once all the open cut mine is drained, as you can see, there's no more coal left. Now, being non-renewable, that means that once we dig up all the coal in my backyard, there's no more left. As opposed to if we were to say, cut down the tree and burn that to produce electricity, we could just grow another tree, that's renewable. Now, what we can do, where's my matches? Where's my matches? Oh, I've got some, oh, we've got some more matches here. What they can do with black coal anthracite is, when they heat it, they drive even more of the moisture out of it. And it will just heat it up a bit there. Yes, you can see it heating nice and good. You don't want to set it on fire, like a kettle or anything. It just heats it, and once it heats up, oh, oh, it's so hot, it, it turns into what we call coke which is like a pure carbon substance which now we can use the coke to help melt down our iron that we dig out of the ground after we separate it from the oxygen and silicon and now once we add the coke with the iron we, we form steel which is used to make fridges which as we learnt last term don't burn very good now let's go and have a look at the molecular formula of some of these sources of energy and see just why they burn so good.